Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree. This time I'm going to show you how to defeat the Divine Beast Dancer boss in the ancient ruins of Rao. This boss is really frustrating because it can breed Death Blight, and it can also spawn enemies or basilisks that also breed Death Blight. So you want to bring armor that has high Death Blight resist. Lusat's set from the base game is one of the best in the game to have for Death Blight resistance. And then also bring any uh, resistance talismans that you can to further increase that resistance. Also craft a bunch of rejuvenating boluses. You're going to need them to get rid of any Death Blight buildup. Because once the bar fills, you die. It is not a poison, it is an instant death. Just like Curse in Dark Souls. Okay, to reach this boss, we have to take a specific path through the ancient ruins of Rao. If you were like me, and you did not have the map fragment while trying to find this place, this can be very frustrating. But, if you did get the map fragment from the base of the ruins, this will get a little bit easier. But, I made a mark on my map, and that is our destination. So, from this side of Grace here on the bridge, I'm going to show you the full path to the boss. And the reason I'm doing this is because, like I said before, this whole area can be very, very confusing because there's no topographical map available, meaning that no matter where you are, if you're inside of a building, it doesn't matter. Like, you're not going to be able to see anything, so I wanted to show the entire path. Your first time through this area, there will be a furnace golem. You can take care of that. It is a normal one, so just chop at its legs till it falls, and then get the critical hit in the mask, do it again, get another critical hit, and it should go down. Okay, so we're going to come up this hill. And we're going to get to another side of grace. I didn't want to start the guide at this side of grace just in case you hadn't even gotten here yet. wanted to show the entire path. So from this side of grace, we are going to now go inside the ruins. And we are going to take a very specific path through these ruins. Let's come up this staircase. Watch out for this bouncing fireball. It is there to interrupt you and get you off of torrent. So we're going to come through here. And then we're going to turn left... And then we are going to go through this section here. You do want to watch out for one of those uh, martial arts ascetic guys. He is lurking in a corner, so you don't want to get jumped by him. We go ahead and take this elevator up. And then from this elevator, we're going to go outside and we're going to drop down in a very specific place. I keep saying very specific because there's literally only one way to get to this place. So turn the corner here, and then we're going to drop down onto the roof of this structure. And then we're going to follow the walkways in this direction. Now, you don't actually need to follow this entire path, but I did want to show you a hidden treasure that's here, because this is kind of your only opportunity to get it while you're in this general vicinity. But the elevator that we want to reach is right there. If you're not interested in the treasure, just jump over to it and take it up, and then resume the guide in a couple seconds. But for the treasure, which is a talisman, you want to come through here, go through these little trap doors, and then there's a chest right here, and inside is the talisman, and then you just come through this trap door, and then you're back at the elevator. So, really quick detour for a good treasure. Okay. So, we're going to take this elevator up. And this elevator is going to bring us to the area with the boss. It's also going to bring us to the area with the stone golem archer. That was probably harassing you uh, earlier on throughout your adventures in the ancient ruins. Don't forget to light this side of grace. This way you don't have to go through all this anymore. And then you can just continue on. So, be very careful of the stone golem archer. It can shoot basically homing arrows if you're not careful so use the terrain to block it as best you can i'm not going to kill it in this video but you just hop up there through the back of the the cliff there and you can take care of him no problem and then you can more freely explore this area but you don't even have to kill him to face the boss although if he's harassing you during the boss fight i've never actually tried this but if he is harassing you during the boss fight try to get him to kill the boss for you sometimes that works out with these sort of uh, I call them Discovery Channel type bosses where you can get the environment to kill the boss for you. That's always a lot of fun. Okay, for the boss fight itself, changing back to the actual kill, it is basically the same exact fight as Belly Rat Tower Settlement. However, we do have the addition of Death Blight. So, since this boss is outdoors, we can ride Torrent. And because I personally always found this boss pretty annoying only because the camera gets very frustrating, but also in his lightning phase, it's just nuts. And there's just so much going on that you can actually use Torn to get away from the boss, sort of line of sight him, block his vision, this way the lightning bolts can't hit you, but also just kind of like waste time and get him to uh, transition the phase. 
You want to be careful whenever you're behind him because he can very quickly spin around and do more attacks. I am very much looking forward to the model viewer of this to see what these guys controlling this thing look like. Um, but they are literally doing a lion dance like from a Chinese parade, which I think is really, really cool. Okay, so for the backflip, you can either roll backward or forward for that. Recommend rolling forward. This way you can get in some extra damage once he lands. But be very careful because he can choose a follow-up attack very, very quickly after that. All right, for this breath attack, you want to stay very close to him. And then once you see the breath coming very close to you, you want to just roll to the side and then push further into him as best you can. Okay, so now we have the Basilisks, and from here on out, I'm just trying to do any sort of range damage that I can do to these things, but you'll notice that I'm just getting on Torrent and trying to get as far away from possible, or as far away as possible from the boss. Now, you can't always control this, because here he is. The boss is so aggressive and will always track you, so you have to be very, very careful. Somehow I didn't die there, but there's also, it seems to be that he doesn't spawn the same number of Basilisks every time, at least in my experience. Sometimes he spawned three, sometimes he spawned four. It differed based on the attempt. Not exactly sure what controls that, but you want to do your best to use the camera as a tool and lock onto him and then try to tap the stick left or right to see if there are any more basilisks around because the last thing you want, the last thing you want is to be fighting him and then a basilisk shows up and fills up the remainder of your death blight bar and you just die when the boss is about to die as well. So you don't want that to happen. So just do your best. Use the camera to find any additional basilisks. Kill them as they appear. If you have pots or any sort of ranged weapons or magic, use that to kill the basilisks. You want to get rid of them as soon as humanly possible. It is easier said than done, but you want to get rid of them quick. This way you can just focus on the boss. That death blight phase is easily the most annoying thing in this fight. Other than that, is it is the exact same as the Belurat version. He just has that added Death Blight phase. So he's got four elements. He's got Death Blight, Earth or Wind, and then Frost and Lightning. Everything else is the exact same aside from the Death Blight. So when he's in this Earth or Wind form, his backflip can shoot a tornado at you, so it has a bit more range. It's the same dodge timing, but you do have to be careful of that extra tornado. He can summon a big tornado. The way I personally choose to deal with that is to just walk into it and block. It doesn't deal any damage. You just take stamina damage. It just counts as physical uh, damage. Nothing to worry about. I noticed that uh, in this version, he changes elements a lot quicker. So what you may want to do if you find yourself running up against more frost, bring boluses to reduce that. I'm never terribly concerned about Frost myself, but it can lead to a lot of damage. So if you find yourself uh, constantly having to deal with this Frost phase, just go ahead and bring Frost boluses along with the Rejuvenating boluses, and you should be okay. Oh, I actually think I see what happened now. I think he spawned uh, Basilisks, and they fell off the cliff, because I only see three now. I guess that's what happened. So maybe try fighting him outside. He may uh, run into less Basilisks, but in any event, I'm doing my best to keep the boss in view while also poorly trying to guess where the basilisks are this way i can deal with them a little bit better so we have one remaining to the right there so i'm going to get onto torrent do my best to get around to that while trying to bait the boss outside to buy me a little bit more time it's not really working the boss is very smart a lot smarter than i give him credit for so the uh the basilisks luckily followed me but the boss did not so i was able to kill them and then we're just going to defeat the boss from here on out so the breath abilities as the boss is standing on its back two legs that can be really really deadly in the frost phase because the frost seems to linger around for quite a while so what i try to do in those instances is i actually try my best to get away from the frost breath i don't actually stay with him to try to deal damage if i can help it it's a lot easier said than done because sometimes the boss just immediately follows up whatever the previous attack was with that frost breath and you can't always help it but that's basically it so i'll let the rest of the fight play out here it's the same thing just keeps rotating elements no big deal as long as you can manage the basilisks and the death blight buildup, you should be okay all right if you have any questions please feel free to leave a comment i'll do my best to help you out if you're looking for more guides for elden ring shadow of the earth tree please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when you guys go live if you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button below this video 
You can also leave a super thanks by clicking the heart icon below this video. Don't forget to join my community Discord. The link for that is in the description below. As always, I'll speak Johnny Cage. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.